This is a Hasty Hydro 8 foot. I found the plans online on the Muskoka Sea Flea website and I decided to build one. When I was young, someone else had one and I was always a little jealous. What follows is a small slideshow of how I went about doing that. The base is just plywood. The sides and the top and the sponsons all attached to it. It makes it relatively simple, uh, but I used some stiffeners and clamped them on to hold the unit while I was building all the other stuff with it. The next few slides show how the sides and the center support are attached to the base. The transom is assembled with a bunch of different parts. The plans will show you all the small ones. I adapted what, they, what needed to be done and uh, put it together. This is a good example of where you never have quite enough clamps. You can always use more. The transom is inserted between the two sidewalls at the rear and put together. It takes a bit more oomph than you would think. Uh, the angle is such that it puts a lot of tension on the sides as you draw them in. You'll need a bunch of clamps here also when you bring them in and you'll need to pull them tighter in the middle in order to make it fit the actual angle. Uh, it works fine. It just takes some a little bit of extra practice. Here's a couple of views. This slide shows how the sponson inner supports are fastened in. They are the strongest part of the sponson, so you want to make sure you get them supported. The triangular gusset in the back is my addition. It's not in the plans, but it just stiffens the, the, the transition from the, the back of the sponson to the edge of the sponson, give it a little bit more strength. The reason for the painting is also to seal it because once you get the, the sponson covers on, you're not getting back in there again. So you want to seal it off for some moisture and that's the reasoning for that. This shows the inner and rear of the sponson section and how it fits to the base. This is the bottom cover for the sponson. It's cut and fit and you make sure it's where you want it to be. Then you paint the inside once again to seal the inside from moisture. It uh, will fit on top of the section that we just looked at. The next three slides are the uh, attachment of the bottom of the sponson. And it's once again one of those things where you always need more clamps. It's a little bit fussy but not difficult. The inner supports on each of the sponsons will have to be sanded down to a diff differing degree. The degree changes from the back to the front. So this is one of those fit and finish things. Uh, cut the degree, add a little bit, check it out, and then replace it again. And keep doing that until you get the fit you really want. The bow top front supports and covering are probably the next project to go for. There is uh, one minor detail that I changed. On the left and right side, you'll see that there's a support that's tapered down and it goes back uh, most of the way back to the, uh, the center cowling. I did that because the plans call for that top rail to go all the way to the front and be beveled in at the very leading edge. It seemed cumbersome, rather difficult, and wouldn't be very well supported when I got finished. So what I did is I extended this section back and put it down to the sponson. Seems to have worked pretty good. Other than that, it's following the plans, getting it in place, and then going for the next thing to do cover. Here's a better view of the supports I was speaking of. I brought that back farther to give it some strength. 
Also, you'll notice that it has to be beveled to match the top bow piece that goes on top, the quarter inch piece of plywood. And that will have to be fit each way as it goes. So it's an on and off kind of thing, like normal. The side rails come next. Both of them will have to be pulled in. Once again, more clamps are better. There is a radius to it and it'll have to follow and hold it together while you're assembling. I assuming glue and screw for all this stuff to keep everything in place. There are no nails in this boat. They're all screws. And I came up with a rather ingenious way of putting the bow together than the nose. But I'll tell you that later. This is simply basically two sides going on. The next series of pictures is all about assembling the top deck bow. This is really one of those where you fit, cut, trim, shave, file, put it back on, take it back off, do all that good stuff. There's a couple of pictures in there uh, where I had painted the interior to prevent the moisture from getting to it after you can't get back to it again. It's also the fact that you can see you can never have enough uh, clamps and the more you have the better off you'll be. At this point in time, I'd like to tell you what I did along the leading edge and the outside edge of the sponsons on the radius where the quarter inch plywood comes together from the top and bottom of the sponson and also where the top of the bow cover comes in at the, at the bottom of the plate. What happened is the plans call for real small finish nails to be driven through and then bent over with a block and finish to hold it together. I thought that might not hold, especially with the boat racking and twisting, and it made me a little nervous. I'm an aviation guy, and so what I did is I came up with the idea of drilling really small holes using 032 inch safety wire, pulling it through, twisting it down, and holding it in place. Then I simply rolled it up onto the top and took a hammer and set it down the little stub down into the plywood. When you put the fiberglass over the, over the edge, it's going to hold it all in place. I thought that would hold much better than a, a simple finishing nail bent over. That's the idea I came up with and it seems to be working. The next series of slides are for the motor board. I used the plans and uh, they need to be wedged in order to get the motor at the right angle. And it's a matter of assembling the parts, bolting them through, and making sure it's good and solid. Don't want the motor to fall off. And then also I sealed inside because it's really hard to get difficult to get at the bottom of the wedge after the whole thing is assembled. At this point, it's ready for the fiberglass on the edges and also for the caulk on the inside. After that's all finished, the things are all sealed and you're ready to go, it should be ready for paint. I'm frugal and I already had a large almost gallon of Macy Ferguson tractor paint gray so what I did is I supplemented that with a quart of Rust-Oleum white I used the white for the trim and for the top of the sponsons and the bow and then I used the straight Macy Ferguson for a lot, the rest of it and then for the interior I didn't want it quite so dark and I didn't want it white so I mixed a little bit to make a lighter gray I think it came out pretty nice I did make a steering mechanism as plans with the exception of the steering wheel which I just bought a small go-kart steering wheel and fastened it to the same mechanism. The mechanism works very very well. I was pleasantly surprised. So there you have it. My plans built from uh, 1960 August Popular Mechanics Hasty Hydro 8 foot. I had fun and I hope you will too.